In the late 1920s, Regina met with Harold Jackman and Dorothy Peterson in the basement of the 135th Street Library branch to discuss creating the Harlem Experimental Theater. They would use the auditorium as their performance stage. Previously, W.E.B. Du Bois used the basement to show plays by the theater company that he founded. Artist Aaron Douglas designed posters and publicity for both Du Bois Company and for the Harlem Experimental Theater. Regina said, In the beginning, we would not limit ourselves to Negro plays until we could produce our own. So our first production was The Duchess Says Her Prayers by Mary Cass Canfield, seen here. Although primarily considered an amateur theater group, the Harlem Experimental Theater did occasionally have professionals work with them, including Edna Thomas, who appeared in the stage and movie versions of A Streetcar Named Desire. Regina also starred in several productions. Audiences could see three one-act plays for 50 cents, including this unidentified production featuring Regina. Eventually, the Harlem Experimental Theater moved from the 135th Street Library branch and performed at St. Philip's Episcopal Church and later moved to the local YMCA. In addition to acting, Regina wrote three plays, two of which were performed by the Harlem Experimental Theater, including Underground, originally titled Matilda, about runaway slaves and the Underground Railroad. In Climbing Jacob's Ladder, an anti-lynching play inspired by Ida B. Wells Barnett, an acquaintance of her father. In 1980, Regina was honored by Adelco for her contributions to African American theater, along with Dick Campbell and Fred Hyman. Debbie Allen and Gregory Hines co-hosted the event. Regina donated her scrapbooks containing Harlem Experimental Theater memorabilia to the organization. In 1990, the Adelco office was robbed and many irreplaceable photos, posters, and scrapbooks were lost, including the Harlem Experimental Theater items that Regina donated. However, her legacy lives on and her plays, including The Man Who Passed, about racial passing, have been included in recent anthologies about black women writers.